Like any other workman's tool, the trawl needs regular attention and maintenance. But when it comes to the trawl design, the net maker will not only put a lot of sections together, specifying the mesh size, the length and the width. He is also specifying a construction which will fold out underwater when it is deployed. And he will make sure it takes the bottom well and has not too much slack netting and no netting under excessive strain. So maintenance is not only about repairing holes in the net, big and small. It is also about maintaining those design features the net maker has built into the net, determining how the forces are distributed in the net. When a repair must be made during fishing operations, it's often during hauling and shooting, in haste, and that means a risk of poor work. It is therefore recommended at regular intervals to take the net off the vessel and give it a thorough check and makeover, cutting up foul repairs and doing them neatly again. The netting material used in trawl nets is not completely stable. During fishing operations, the trawl is sometimes overloaded or it is filled with sand. Conditions like that can either shrink the net or it can expand. A check of the net must therefore comprise a check of the mesh size, especially in the cut-in, where the mesh size is often part of the legislation. A full checklist of measurements should be made of the different sections in the trawl. In the belly here, you should focus on the difference in length of the upper panel and the lower panel. And you should measure also out the distance from here, the fishing circle, and way out to the, where the bridles are attached. To make sure a section in the upper panel has a certain difference in relation to the corresponding section in the lower panel, the net is turned around so that you can grab a number of meshes in one hand from the lower panel and hold them next to a number of meshes from the top panel and stretch the two sections up. It will reveal any stretching or shrinking. Note that the meshes should be taken from the joining round a distance away from the selvages. The length of the ground gear and the hanging ratio to the fishing line must be checked, as must the hanging ratio of the netting on the framing ropes, headline and foot rope. Bridles and sweeps are prone to stretch as they are used over time, and most likely not to the same degree on both sides. To avoid any distortion in the net, extra care must be given to make absolutely sure that the bridles and sweeps are exactly the same length. It is recommended that this check is done monthly. If the net is coming fast and you have struggled to get it loose, it is also recommended to give it a thorough check. Not only looking for ruptures of the net, but also looking for stretch in netting and wires. Measurements should be referred back to the checklist of gear measurements for that particular net. As you have seen, the maintenance is about bringing the net back to the conditions the net maker built into the net. A too long net section should be cut back. A few links should be added to a too short headline extension. And the hanging on the framing ropes should be cut up and redone. It's all about distributing forces into the net and keeping them that way. But how do you know the original measurements? You will often not find them written down on the net maker's net plan. Therefore the answer is that whenever you get a new trawl, the first thing you should do is to give it a thorough check and write up all these measurements and then lock it up in a safe place. Then you are always able to refer back to all the original measurements and mitigate any changes.